so today I want to talk about some really interesting puzzles which come from systems called cellular automata. Now, basically, very basically, a cellular automata is a system where you have some kind of grid of cells and the states of those cells change due to local interactions. And I want to focus in on some of the simplest kinds of cellular automata and show you about some really fascinating puzzles which can arise from them. Now, um, I'm going to be taking quite a kind of puzzle-orientated view of these systems, but it's well worth noting that cellular automata are very important in computer science and very important for modeling all kinds of fascinating systems. Um, like the formation of snowflakes, uh, um, turbulent fluid flow, um, lots and lots of things in social sciences and economics and biology and so forth. But uh, I just want to show you a few very interesting puzzles which can come from looking at these systems. So here you see one of the simplest so-called elementary cellular automata. So let me try and explain this picture. Basically, we've got a system here, a one-dimensional system where we just have a line of cells, each of which can be black or white. And then we imagine that the colors of these cells change over time. So um, actually here, this is what's called a space-time plot. The first row shows the system on the first time step. The second row shows the system on the second time step, etc. Time reads down the page. Now, the way that this system actually evolves is really, really simple. So the rule here is written at the top. And basically, what it says is this. Um, to find out what color a cell is going to be on the next time step, we just apply this rule here. So it says that... Um, if we look at a cell, let's say this one on time step two, let's say we want to find out what state this cell is going to be in on time step three. Well, our rule says that um, it will become black if both of its neighbors have different colors, and otherwise it will become white. So to find out the destiny of this cell, we look at the colors of its neighbors. Well, the uh, color of the uh, neighbor to its left is white, and the color of the neighbor to its right is also white. So in this case, both neighbors have the same color, and so our rule says that the future state of this cell ought to be white, as it is. As it is. Okay then, so now let's suppose we want to find out what the future state of this cell is going to be here. Well. We just apply the same kind of reasoning again. Um, we have a look at what the colors or states of the cells next to it are. So in this case, the neighbor to the left is white. And the neighbor to the right is black. So in this case, the neighbors of the cell have different colors. And so our rule says that this cell should change black on the next time step, as it does. And so maybe if you pause this video for a while um, and you can convince yourself that this whole pattern is created just by starting with a single black cell and then applying this very, very simple local deterministic rule where all of the cells are getting updated at the same time according to this, this little rule here. Okay, so it's often more common to visualize the rules behind these kind of systems uh, a bit more like as shown here. We put these little pictures at the top just to show the rules. We're showing here what color a particular cell is going to turn into um, when it has a particular neighborhood. For example, um, at the top left here, this little motif says that if um, a cell is black and both of its neighbors are black, then um, it will turn white. So uh, a little bit of thought should convince you that um, these rules here essentially correspond exactly to that 
little verbal description of this system which I just was talking about. The advantage of using pictures here is that um, we can describe lots of other interesting cellular automata um, just by changing these rules slightly. So now we can think of a whole family of systems and start to try and understand what kinds of behavior these systems have. Anyway, the first challenge for you is to try and understand what kind of pattern gets produced by this cellular automata here with the rules shown here, or if you like, the rules I just talked about. I want you to describe the pattern which has been generated. Now, hopefully you can see that um, there's lots of triangles appearing and there does seem to be some kind of regularity emerging. And if I show you an image of a system evolving for more time steps, um, the story looks a lot clearer. It seems as if we're getting some kind of structure of nested triangles. Now, um, what I'd like you to try and do as a challenge for yourself is to try and come up with a, as accurate description of this pattern as possible. Ideally, what you'd want is some kind of uh, formula or description which could tell you, given a the coordinates of a particular cell, you know, say cell the cell which is x units to the right and t units down, is that cell going to be black or white? Can you come up with some kind of simple formula which would um, express that? Um, and for those of you who are not so algebraically minded, perhaps you can just think about um, how you might construct this sort of shape which is emerging here. Um, it does seem to have a kind of fractal property to it. Anyway, um, this first problem um, I think is relatively easy. Um, but the next problem related to this system is quite a lot harder. And basically, in this case here, we're just starting from really one of the simplest initial conditions we can think of. We've just got one black cell, and all of the other cells are white. And that's how we're initializing this system. Now, my qu next question is, what happens if we have different initial conditions? I mean, we could have all kinds of initial conditions. We could have, you know black, 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 white, black, 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 white, etc. And um, are easy to understand configurations always going to occur from different kinds of initial conditions? Or are we going to see something a little bit more interesting? Well, this is a picture of what happens when we start with this initial condition at the top here. I generated the initial condition randomly, but the rest of this picture was just produced by following those simple rules which I was just talking about. A cell becomes black if both its neighbors have different colors, otherwise it becomes white. And so this um, system is actually uh, what's known as a chaotic cellular automata. It has chaotic behavior. And um, it's quite easy to see that by this picture in a way. You can see that a very complicated pattern is emerging. And um, my sort of problem for you, the next problem, is to try and understand what's happening here. Now, this particular system, cellular automata rule 90, is really quite special, I think, because most systems like this, which produce chaotic behavior from simple rules, tend to be incredibly hard to understand, as far as we know. But this particular system actually has some very, very nice properties which allow you to really burrow down and get a really good understanding of how this system actually works, even from very complicated initial conditions. I mean, obviously what's going on here is very complicated, but... Um, it turns out that if you use the right kinds of algebra and things, 
you can really get a very a succinct description of what's going to happen in the future given the initial condition. Well, okay. Um, these are a few systems. These are a few cases to do with Rule 90, which is kind of well known for being, although it's a chaotic cellular automata, it's, it's quite tame compared to a lot of the other systems you find. And the next system I want to show you is quite a lot more exciting, I think. This is Rule 30. And um, again, we're showing the rules at the top. Um, and the main thing that should strike you here is that this pattern evolving here from one black block and a load of white blocks, it's not symmetric and it doesn't look particularly simple. Now, another thing that you might want to notice is about the rules. These are the evolution rules behind the system. So, um, for example, if you have a white block which has a white block to its left and a black block to its right, then it's going to turn black. That's one of the parts of the rules. Um, so another thing to notice is that the actual rules behind this system are asymmetric. Um, it's not like the other system where the rules were really were really symmetric and they didn't depend upon the state of the current cell. They only depended upon its neighbors. In this case, things are a bit more complicated. But still, not really that much more complicated. I mean, we're still specifying the rule just by these eight different pictures here. It's just that the pictures are slightly different. Anyway, technicalities aside, this is a very... Um, you should find it a very interesting system because it's actually an example of a rather non-intuitive um, idea, which is that from very simple rules and a very simple initial condition, we can get immensely complicated dynamics. What do I mean? Well, you can see this thing evolving just by looking at successive rows going downwards. And you can see that it seems like something quite complicated is going on. But the... Um, the sort of inner cynic inside you is probably saying something like, well, I bet it ends up in a really simple pattern or something. Well, um, let's just have a look. Okay, so here is our system, cellular automata rule 30, running for 100 time steps. Now, remember, the rules are really, really simple, uh, just as I showed in the last frame. And... The initial initial pattern is just a single black block. But look how complicated this pattern is, which has been produced. And right here, this is kind of where we go down the rabbit hole, because nobody really understands what's going on here. Um, what we're essentially seeing is immense amounts of complexity being created from very, very simple rules. And um, in my mind, this is not only a very interesting puzzle, it's also a very important scientific problem to understand how, why, and when this kind of thing happens. Anyway, um, so there's many aspects of this um, cellular automata rule 30 which are not very well understood. Um, this is the thing running for 100 time steps. Um, just to um, just to show you, in case you thought that some order was just about to appear in this picture, let me show you here. This is cellular, cellular automata running for 1,000 time steps um, here at the bottom. So you can see that there's a bit of regularity on the left, but in general there is an immense amount of complexity here being generated on the right. And the longer you generate this thing, the more complicated it seems to look. And um, a lot of people who have studied this system thoroughly um, are kind of convinced that there probably is no simple 
way of predicting what this system's going to do. Although that has not been proven, it could be the case that there's a, a very simple way of describing how this system works and that all of these dynamics, all of this complexity is sort of illusionary, although personally I, I doubt it. Anyway, what's the um, problem that I want to pose for you? Well, the problem is this. You see in this pattern, if you just look at a particular row, you can see lots of white and black blocks in, in various different orders. So you can think of the black blocks as ones and the white blocks as zero. So in all, if you like, you can think of rows of this pattern as binary strings, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, etc. And the question is, does every binary string appear somewhere in this pattern if you run it long enough and if you look deeply enough within it? So in other words, um, if I wrote Macbeth and converted it into binary, um, could I find the corresponding sequence of black and white blocks somewhere within this pattern? Now, I conjecture that the answer is yes, but the open problem is to prove or disprove this. This open problem was suggested by Stephen Wolfram in his epic book, A New Kind of Science. And I don't think anybody's got to the bottom of it, but um, yeah, he did show with some simulations that, um, you know, as far as you can tell, all of these binary strings up to a certain length are appearing within the system. Um, although proving it can be quite a different matter. So this is the problem. Can you prove or disprove that every binary string of a finite length can be found somewhere written horizontally in the pattern that you get by evolving rule 30 for a long, long, long time, starting from just a single black block? And this is an important conjecture um, for at least two reasons. One reason is that um, here we started off with a single black block, which is just like the simplest initial condition you can think of. But um, if this conjecture is true, then this system actually produces all of the other initial conditions that it could need. And so evolving this thing starting off from a single black block is just as complicated in some sense as evolving it from any other initial condition. And I think the problem also is important, perhaps from a more kind of philosophical viewpoint. I mean, um, think about the old adage of the infinite number of monkeys that the infinite number of typewriters being able to produce Shakespeare. Well, the idea behind that, presumably, was that since monkeys hit keys randomly, eventually they, they could produce Shakespeare or something. And um, if this conjecture I was just talking about is correct, then, you know, if this thing really is producing all the different binary strings, essentially it's managing to produce all different binary representations of information and... Probably the reason for that is that, in some sense, this small deterministic rule is making something very close to true randomness, even though it's completely deterministic. I mean, it's things like that are actually usually called pseudo-randomness. But anyway, this is the main problem. It's actually something which I've been meaning to attack for some time, but there's always so many things to do. Anyway, um... There's a lot of things you can look at it's with cellular automata. I'll give you a link to a great website where you have lots of these cellular automata programs online. So you can just use your web browser to run them for yourself and get a lot of intuition that way. Oh, and by the way, if anyone actually finds a solution to this problem, uh, please let me know. I'd be very interested to uh, see if this is true or false.